And it's time for another edition of What's on Tap. Gary Monteroso here with John Cashew. John, you're dressed in eagle green today. I am. It's been one of the best weeks of my life. <laughs> I think it goes right above when my kids were being born. If they're listening out there, I don't really mean that. I didn't see you shimmy up one of those light standards in Philly, did I? No, I I, I left that up to the younger pups to go do that. I, I think that I'm past my prime when I'm shimmying at this point. Those days are over, huh? Yeah, they're long gone, I believe. But there was some celebration. Seven hundred thousand people is the current estimate. And and you know what? It was it was done really well. There was no cars being flipped. I mean, it was really good for the city of Philadelphia and the surrounding. In the area. area. Yeah, it was really, really a so cool thing. So much bad press it's, it came down after they after they won the game yeah. Sunday evening. So it's good to see some positive news. Yeah, great week. From Philadelphia. Going to take kind of a different slant. Oh, by the way, we should mention it. We should mention Tara's in San Francisco. Tara's away. What a surprise. She, she is, is away. She's a world yes, traveler. She most is, but we should hear from her later on the day. She's going to be reporting from San Francisco Beer Week, which I believe is their their 10th annual event and a lot of huge things going on out there yeah and it's a really great vibrant beer market out there very much so yeah we're gonna, like, we're gonna take kind of a different slant today and we're going to be exploring a drink called prosecco which i have to admit i like the drink but i didn't know a whole lot about it about yeah. the process yeah I, I did a little deep dive some research yeah. as well we were talking about it earlier it's i think it's like the poor man champagne does that sound maybe that's why i'm attracted to it <laughs> <laughs> Could it's be. right in our wheelhouse <laughs> exactly right so actually, if actually the first time I think I had Prosecco was no more than three, four, five years ago. I, I fell in love with it. Really liked it. Yeah, Price point is good, just like you said. It's a good thing. I think it's something that's uh, been more frequently seen in the market mm -hmm. recently mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, in the last couple of years. Well, the reason why we're doing this, I have a friend in California. His name is Ty Armstrong Sr., and he runs a company called Black Tie. Black Tie Brewing, actually, and he has come out with what he calls Champagne Shots. In fact, that's the website, Champagne Shots, S-H-O-T-Z, dot com. And he sent me some in the mail a little while ago, and he's marketing these right now, meant to pair with Prosecco or Champagne. Uh, the ratio is about a half an ounce of these flavored shots, and you and I have two different flavors here that we're going to be sampling, with about five and a half ounces of Prosecco. So do we have the Prosecco? Anyway, oh, here we go, right in front of us here. I don't know. Johnny, you want to do the honors on yeah, this? Yeah, we'll give that a shot. We'll try to see what happens on this, okay? And if you hear a good pop, it's, let's see what happens. Oh, that sounded good. Congratulations. Thank you, John. Now, let's see what we have here. Now, they, the company actually makes several different flavors. They make a Passion Island, which is a blend of exotic tropical fruits. Thank you. It looks good. That's perfect. Five and a half ounces, by the way. You, you've done this before, haven't you? Yeah, I, I poured a little on my day. <laughs> Velveteen Red, which is a... It's velvety smooth antioxidant blend of berries and pomegranate. Sunrise Mojito, a citrus, a citrus blend with a hint of mint. That's the key right there. Tropical Hibiscus, Tropical Hibiscus, Natural, natural Cherry, Passion Fruit, and Mango. White Bellini, which is white peach, is the star fruit with subtle hints of pear and ginger. And Blue Raspberry, Ice Blue Raspberry with hints of apricot and mango and pineapple. Now, what do we have today? Well, we have two different flavors that he sent us, and uh, you're going to be trying the Sunrise Mojito Sunrise version. Sunrise Mojito, okay. And I have the Passion Fruit Island version of it. Very good. Okay, yes. And uh, right, now th these bottles are packaged in one and a half ounce increments. Airplane so bottles. You get about, right, exactly, yeah. So you get about three uh, servings, if you will. From one of these bottles so we're gonna we're gonna do the damage to it right now you ready yeah we're ready to go all right let's see i'm just gonna pour this in here did you oh, you already did yours right i took a little taste of the prosecco first just to see what it was like and poured okay. it in there changes the color it changes the color right change it and you had to let it sit for about 25 to 30 seconds i a think they question said i have and we were actually talking about this prior is the market for this yeah, I know we were talking about this earlier. I feel of uh, champagne and Prosecco as either a celebratory thing or maybe a something that you would do to finish a, a dinner or not something that you would be out looking to have a mixed drink with. It's just a weird thing. But you know what? Maybe it's just because nobody's come up with it yet. Maybe so, right, exactly. So what do you think? You think it's just sat long enough? You know, I'm getting, yeah, I think so. I think I'm ready. Make, make me kind of thirsty here. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> cheers. Cheers to you, brother. Okay, let's see what happens. It is interesting. Subtle. Very subtle. Subtle change. I like it. Yeah, I do um, too. 
I like it. I have to see what. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, works. you know, if you like, if you like uh, the bubbly and the sweetness of it, mm-hmm. it adds to it. It really does give it a little bit different flavor profile, Absolutely. but it doesn't overpower it. That's right. Exactly. That's yeah, a good so, idea. Yeah, not bad. Not bad, not bad at all. You know, there's a couple other things you can do with this. I know he, what's hot right now. We're seeing a lot of the non-alcohol drinks that are again becoming big, and I know Ty sent me some information about um, actually using this in non-alcohol. Uh, drinks. I'm trying to come up with one of these recipes. Oh, he sent me a mojito and passion island fruit recipe, which he said is quite good. So, uh, and he has videos, by the way, posted online. Oh, here it is. Here's the non-alcohol mocktail mixer. Six ounce glass. Add a half ounce of the black tie mocktail mixer. Top off with sparkling water, Sprite Seven Up, or Canada Dry, Canada Dry ginger ale. Yeah, I think I think that is a really good angle for this. I mean, it's going to give flavor to something that you know typically. You know, we would have to squeeze fresh fruit into or something like that might be. A you know what? You're run. right. I think if he can be if he's aiming to be flexible with the bev- with this addition, I think he may have something. There. And it travels. That's a, it's a good it's, a, it's which is a beautiful something. thing. Also, we're, yeah. we're going to put some pictures online later on today so you can see what it's all about. So what do you think? So you would try this? I, I would try it. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not a big champagne Prosecco guy, but I mean, you know, this gives it a little bit more depth of flavor. Mm-hmm. I mean, it gives you something to look for when you're drinking. And mm-hmm. I just think it's different. I think it's a cool idea. My thing is, I don't know how you market this to a restaurant and to a club mm-hmm. where champagne is, is typically, you know, imbibed. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you know, for home, I think it's a great idea. So if you want to explore it again, it's champagne shots and shots is spelled S-H-O-T-Z dot com.